was hailed by Prince Harry as the real hero after becoming a double amputee while serving in Afghanistan. Well, now, Ben McBean says he supports Black Lives Matters, but as a veteran who also wants to keep Churchill's statue in Parliament Square. And he joins us now. Good morning to you, uh, Ben. Great Good to have morning. you on the programme. Um, Thank you. So, it's interesting, isn't it? So, the Black Lives Matter... We saw these amazing images over the weekend of, of uh, some of the Black Lives Matter protesters helping to save the life of somebody who completely disagrees with everything they stand for, which is a, m a wonderful moment of humanity. But there's also been a lot of complexity around this whole thing. And I would imagine that you speak for quite a few people who think Black Lives Matter and want mm -hmm. to advance, you know, justice and equality for black people, but also find it offensive that Winston Churchill's statue got defaced and has had to be boarded up. So explain. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, you know, right now everyone's, you know, angry. And when you're mad, you don't really think straight. So no one's ever been able to smash things up, rip statues down and people champion it. All it means is the person just gets hunted down, arrested, they end up in a system that they've probably been fighting against in the first place, which, you know, kind of goes against them, maybe for being black. So it doesn't make any sense. I mean, some statues, maybe, if they're not that important, or really, maybe vote for them to be taken down, as in vote, not just tear them down, because you just get in trouble. But for me, with church, it was a bit like, I went to obviously Afghanistan as a Royal Marine. If somebody came to me today and said, that war wasn't right, would I now chip my green lid in the bin or chip my medals away? No, because I'm proud of my history and what I was a part of. The same thing with the Churchill statue. You can look at it in two ways. Either one way, it represents racist people, because you may say he was racist, or you can think about all the young men, you know, lying about their age to go out there and fight in the war against Hitler, being shot, wearing no equipment, really, no protection whatsoever, all the young men, women, children, the elderly, they back in the UK fighting, so we won the war. You've got to think about all of those things yeah. as well. So the meaning of it represents a hell of a lot more than just one bloke who someone thinks is racist. We can't just tear everything down. That is ben, such a big you, part of our history. Uh, uh, then it yeah, and I, and I think many, many, many people will agree with you about uh, Sir Winston Churchill, but I, I wonder if you felt differently about the statue of the slave trader Edward Colston in Bristol, because there does seem to be a distinction for people between some of these historical figures. That if you're a, you know, our weather presenter, Alex Beresford, grew up in Bristol, you know, and expressed concern about the fact that for young black people, seeing a, a celebration, a memorialization of a slave trader in a city where they live has a different connotation. Yeah, of course. I mean, if this is this what I'm saying, like some things you can't just erase all history, so some things will have to stay. It's as simple as that, and that's just the reality of it. Um, that's that statue of like slave traders and so on and so forth. Of course, things like that, you know, they need to be voted to be taken down for a start because that way it's more powerful because everyone obviously agrees with you. So some things can be taken down, but some things probably can't be and shouldn't be taken down, and that, that's what I'm saying. Um, the reality of it is I don't even know what people are worried about statues right now because, you know, yeah. I'm trying to fight real racist human beings who are going to cause me and my family harm and change my son's future. And at the same time, you've got people worrying about statues that are just stood there like that for a thousand years. You've got people worrying about the in-betweeners film. You've got people fighting for, to get the monkey taken off Cocoa Pops cereal, for God's sake. You know, the reality of it is we're fighting too many battles that aren't really there. We need to be fighting the real racist people here and trying well, to change that's the been my, That's and been my can't... issue generally about... We had a, a big debate about the trans debate and J.K. Rowling and so on, and it inflames everybody and everybody, you know, goes completely nuts. Uh, it doesn't really help anything. Nothing gets achieved. It's a cultural war no. being waged by very angry people on both sides, not prepared to, to give or take an inch of their yeah. argument, and get, what gets lost is actually any p progress where we try and come together, which is what used to happen yeah. in a democracy. We try and come together and work out what we can agree on. And it seems that's to me it, you, mean, you, that's exactly right, what you've been doing here. Yeah. Right, right now, we're angry. If you're angry, don't go to the protest because someone's going to just agitate you and then you're going to be on who's going to represent the protest by throwing a punch or a stone. So if you're angry, use your nugget. Be, be smart. Don't go. Don't go there and get yourself drawn into that situation. Uh, maybe your fight is on social media, posting messages of how we're going to solve this problem. You know, think about solutions. Because, yes, we've been mad for two or three weeks now, but surely we can't go into a fourth, fifth and sixth week just still acting crazy because no one's going to deal with it acting this way. When Boris Johnson speaks about the movement, he's never really actually spoke about solutions of how to move forward. He's just mentioned all of the things that we've been doing in a negative way. So if you stop acting that way, whilst the world's media is watching us, use, use our common sense. Whilst the world's watching us right now, 
and we have these platforms, we have a voice. Use your voice to actually come up with solutions and speak in a positive light rather than constantly, I'm sick and tired of just being a scene in the media as thugs and this, that and the other. I'm sick and tired of someone fighting over here to change the TV program that no one even watches. We need to fight against the real racism, fight against the next generation of kids who should grow up without even looking at the club. Well said, well said, Ben. Um, can I just ask you about you for a moment? Um, you know, you were a double amputee, you suffered mm. PTSD, you had an awful time after you were blown up when you were 20 years old serving this country. And how are you getting on? How's life for you now? Yeah, not bad. I mean, you know, you can never forget, you know, I mean, that's, that will always be like that. So even if I, 10, 20 years later, I'll always still be not haunted by what happened, but I, I can never forget it. It's just learning how to live with these injuries. Um, the main thing for me is I can still go out and have fun. I can still do things. I can still be a father. So that's what I really care about right now. Before I became a dad, I was just, it was all just obviously me, 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 just having a beer or something like that. But now um, my life's much more worth living. Because at I'm some point, also, a couple of years I ago... I'm told you've become a brilliant one-handed nappy changer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's one of those things where you just push into pressure to do something. You've just got to do it. So I've never minded. And I've, I mean, it was hard work at first, but it's the same thing when, when I was first injured and they were saying about getting dressed or how do you put a toast or cut a steak with one hand and things like that. And I've never wanted to use, like, adaptations and stuff. So I've always just, like, found a way. And obviously I've just had to fight. Well, I've got another option either. Just don't change my son, or I, I figure it out. See, so, yeah, I'll just figure everything out, really. And You've got an amazing... Your... Sorry. Sorry, I was just going to say, Ben, what are your hopes and fears for your son as he grows up? Because you're obviously a dedicated father. But as you see all these protests now, what would you like to change by the, son... by the time your son is your age? Yes, I mean, to be honest, the reality of it is people are racist right now as adults. They probably want to be racist. They were just saying they wanted to be racist a couple of days ago. Um, and we probably can't change hardly any of them, maybe a handful. But the reality of it is it's all about our kids, it's about the next generation. I don't want, you know, the, the racism isn't in anyone's body as a kid. It's by the time you're 10 years old, if I'm raising my son to play football or go to a boxing match or whatever, and then someone else is raising their kid to just hate black people because we've got more pigment in our skin than they have, that's the problem. So what we can't have is just the next three, four, five, six generations still being raised as kids into adults to hate other people just because of the colour of their skin. So that's what I'm kind of fighting for. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important fight we have on our hands at the minute. Don't be worrying about statues that aren't punching you in the face when you walk past. Don't worry too much right now about getting the in-betweeners taken off TV 15 mm -hmm. years later because you're upset about it. Worry about how we're going to make a difference and create solutions. Because I think by now, we've been protesting a couple of weeks now, and if we really just put out solution after solution or try to, maybe we'd have had a, a, a meeting or a Zoom call with, like, you know, Boris Johnson or whoever can potentially help us create change. But instead, we've spent three weeks kicking off and all the good messages that have been out there, they've been overshadowed and overlooked by people just throwing stones and defacing statues yeah. and stuff like that.